were like, oh my God, you made it. It's great. Except for by the time I made it there, I wasn't just like an average drug addict. I was good at getting high. So like somebody OD'd in the process of my journey and I benefited severely from it because I was an addict and that's what happened. It was like some guy like towards, like I was almost to the top and I was like, screw it. I'm going to get high. I don't know how life could get worse. I'm not even there yet. Everybody hates me. I'm all alone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So this guy ODs and I, and I robbed him. And so I had like all this dope. I had Xanax. I had all this stuff. And so I arrived and I literally like had all this stuff. So y'all are using together when he ODs or like you just. No, he didn't. Oh, well, no. So he said, I, okay. And so he brings me to the guy. He goes here. She wants to get something. This guy goes, well, I'm not well. So I got to get myself right first. Mm -hmm. I'll take care mm -hmm. of you. Dude got himself a little too good. And you're just waiting on your dope. I'm and waiting. he sits there and fixes and ODs right in front of you. Yes. Nobody else is around. Nobody just else. you and him. I don't know the guy. Yes. Brianna. Hey. Thanks for coming. Hey. I didn't want to get too far into our conversation. Because we were starting to talk about everything, and I was like, yo, we got to wait. Just hold on. Let's start recording first. I'm too excited. Right. Pull that mic back to you a little bit. <laughs> all right, all right. There, yeah, we yeah, go. there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have to get more comfortable. There we go. Sit back and chill. Yeah. Relax. That's right. Yeah. You look amazing. Thanks. You said your... Uh, my outfit was like three bucks. I'm like, team you. And then my shoes are like a thousand. So, make sure... <laughs> Saint Laurent. Your feet, yeah, feet are not going to hurt. No. So you hit me up, man. You said you wanted to tell your story. So let's let's start with like, you know, what are you clean from? What did you like using? Um. So I loved dope for a very long time. Heroin. It's, yeah, it was the most the most hated drug. Of course, I and and you know I didn't even want to get into it. Uh, the person that got me into it was like I don't know. He was like the typical cool guy, I guess, and like I fell in love and like chased him. It was that like story. I literally like chased him all the way to California. Wow. Up the West Coast, like my whole family turned their back on me. Okay. And I was like, I don't care. I'm going. It's true love. You know, I felt I felt great on dope. I thought it was love. Um, <laughs> but it was really, not, it was not love so, at all. So where did it all start? Like, did you start using young? Like, was your um, first thing heroin, smoking weed? I okay. So, I actually so I inherited some houses when I was fifteen. I had a shitty childhood, mm -hmm. and then I moved out when I was literally like fifteen and a half. My grandpa died. I moved into the house, and uh, we had to like remove dead grandpa couch. It was crazy. Like, he, nobody found her for two weeks. He was oh, in there. Man. Yeah. It's so, like, the couch, the room was built after, like, the furniture had gotten in there. So we literally had to, like, cut the couch apart because it was bigger than to the door frame out. to get it out. So, like, Dad's, like, throwing up. Dead Grandpa couch happened. Yeah. And so, like, <laughs> I was the first person to stay in there since he had locked himself in there for, like, 12 years. When my grandma died, my grandpa just locked himself in there. Okay. Like, the bathrobe she hung up when we went on vacation for him was still hanging in the same position 12 years later. Wow. Like everything this much dust. So, like, I moved into there, and I ended up getting it together. Though, <laughs> Like, I started selling ketamine. Okay. okay what and age? So, like, I was, like, I'd say, like, 17, something like that. Like, I remodeled this house over a couple of years. Like, I learned how to drive. Like, I'm out in the middle of the woods by myself in, in upstate New York. And, like, okay, so I'm, where, I'm learning where, life. Where are your parents? Like, what, where's mom and dad? Like, what okay. happened? Dad is in upstate New York, but he still ain't got it together. I don't know. He's, he's okay. the worst drunk. He, he's still, he, he's a kid. Okay. And so, uh, and mom is, uh, I don't know. Chasing another husband or no, at that point she was, I don't know. She's like a superficial type of worried about herself. Okay. On to the next one. Okay. We actually, there was a, a wedding scare this weekend. And so I had to call her up and ask her if she got married for the sixth time. And uh, I was like, is this Mrs. Uh, she was like, what? She started <laughs> laughing. She was like, oh, so you heard? I was like, are you married again? She was like, no, that was a joke. But uh -huh. I was like, eh, it didn't surprise me. Right. But six, anyway. six is a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. so anyway, so, so I'm out in the woods. I'm selling K. All right. And I meet this boy who actually I thought was gay. I thought he was gayer than gay. In fact, we had this weird, like, fight at a gay bar. This other gay man said he was his boyfriend. And, like, I was like, 
he was like, no, I'm not gay. And he's like, you've been with me so long. And they're like literally pulling me. One's got one arm and they're like, choose. And I'm in this like weird gay love triangle at this gay bar that I was spinning at. It was so weird. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so anyways, he comes into my life and he had he had not mentioned that he had been on Suboxone, getting clean, something like that. He was in some weird process. Well, eventually, like, he ended up staying at my place long enough for me to realize he was getting sick. Mm -hmm. And so we, I helped him through this, you know, crazy withdrawal. And then, you know, I was like, I really wanted nothing to do with that. And through, like, being with him little by little, like, he was, like, he got me, like, muscle shoot K, and then he was, like, see, it's not so bad, and, like, he kept, like, it was little incremental steps that, like, had it not been him, had it not been that way, I never would have touched it, mm -hmm. like. Manipulated like, you slowly over time. Yeah, literally, and, and I was just, nobody's ever had me so stupid before, literally, like, I was young, and I was so stupid. Head over heels. Head over heels. So he's just manipulating you into using. Now he gets his habit back too, right? Yeah, he gets his habit back, and I've got lots of money, and I've got lots of things, and so oh, we shit. run through all my money, my house, my connects, and eventually we say, "Fuck it, we'll go to Virginia." <laughs> so we move at my into my parents' house, and I don't know. My my stepdad gets him a job a really good job making a lot of money he's uh, training him to be a surveyor and he starts like meeting people at work and slowly working this back into our lives and uh i was like you know no i don't like it da, 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 da. but like as he did it i started to do it and so eventually he had ended up stealing from my parents. I didn't realize he was stealing silver coins the whole time. Hmm. And he stole over $10,000 worth of coins. Like, they, wow. like, called pawn shops and all of this. And, like, at that point, they didn't believe that I didn't know. And I was so head over heels. I didn't even care he did it. I chased him. Like, I went into rehab. There was a moment where we got split up. I was like, I can't do this anymore. I told my mom, I was like, check me into any rehab right now. I'll go right now. And she, I don't know, she pulled the rabbit out of a hat. I was in the car going to like some other part of Virginia, went to rehab. In that process, I gave her my phone to give to him. She said that that phone got lost. It, it was weird. Some situation happened. She said that he took off. Anyways, they had gotten rid of him. Basically, they saw their shot. Right. You know what I mean? I'm in rehab. They're getting rid of right. him. They yeah. sent him to the West Coast and they had gotten into my facebook they said he blocked me well they went blocked him from my side mm -hmm. and they got all my things and they thought they had their ducks in a row well um i'm i get out of rehab you know and this is like a month or two later um i get an email from this spanish woman that i've never seen before and it's like hey um it's me i'm on the west coast and he's like you know um come he's like i'll get you to me da, 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 da. your parents got rid of me and i didn't know any of this happened i was like oh my god and so i'm like i must get to him so I, after all that after all that okay yeah so i'm like i must get to him so i i uh i was like you know what all these rehabs have been calling me to go for this aftercare stuff i was like you know what? there's probably some nice ones over there i was like Oh, Michael's house in Palm Springs. I was like, yes, I'll go to rehab, Mom, but it has to be there. And she was like, hmm, he's on the West Coast. That rehab's on the West Coast. Right. I said, yeah, but he's on the top of the West Coast. That rehab's on the bottom of the West Coast. I'm not yes, an idiot. Right. I'm not going to I'm not gonna right. pull nothing. She said, you go to that rehab and you do anything but go to rehab. We're done. We're done. That's it. I said, of course not. I'm going to rehab. Right. I want to get clean. Lying like I shit. Lo I love getting clean. Mm -hmm. So I get over there. I get, you know, good enough. I get good enough to not get sick. And I fucking take off in that rehab and make a sign. I'm literally hitchhiking. I call my dad up for some money. I said, Daddy, I'm on the West Coast. He said, what? I said, yeah, they didn't think I could do it, but I made it. I'm here. He started laughing. I said, can you send me a hundred bucks? He said, Okay. <laughs> So I got like a hundred bucks from my dad, and I started my bus trip adventure of hitchhiking. Up and I to made, where he was. I literally made it. And where was he staying? He was in Sisters, Oregon. I made it from Palm Springs, uh, California, to Sisters, Oregon. Okay. I actually overshot it. I ended up in Portland first. 
I overshadowed on a bus that missed connections, and they wanted to drop me off at this bus station in the middle of the night, and I can already see the homeless people, mm -hmm. like, lingering. It was, like, creepy video of, like, homeless people lingering the dangerous streets. And they're like, okay, there's the stop. It'll open in a few hours. And I'm like, and, and I just stand out there with my stuff until Scared it opens. Scared to death. With them people out there. They, they're going to be there, too. No, no, I'm not getting off the bus. <laughs> and I told her, they're like, you have, I'm like, nope, not getting off the bus. So I overshot it and they ended up having to like refund me and I had to take a train or something back down. So you show up there and what's he yeah. doing? What's he so doing then? We're like, oh my God, you made it. It's great. Except for by the time I made it there, I wasn't just like an average drug addict. I was good at getting high. So like somebody OD'd in the process of my journey and I benefited severely from it because I was an addict and that's what happened. It was like some guy like towards like I was almost to the top and I was like, screw it. I'm going to get high. I, I don't know how life could get worse. I'm not even there yet. Everybody hates me. I'm all alone. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I mean? So this guy ODs and I, and I robbed him. And so I had like all this dope. I had Xanax. I had all this stuff. And so I arrived and I literally like had all this stuff so y'all are using together when he ods or like you just no, he didn't oh well no so he said i okay so i was going through somebody else i was at this motel the cd motel that i just met somebody like the morning that morning who i wanted to go back through him okay. so he in california they're really loose with things like they'll just like meet the guy at the fence or da, 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 da. so he goes i don't got time for you he goes i'm just gonna bring you to the guy okay and so he brings me to the guy. He goes, here, she wants to get something. This guy goes, well, I'm not well, so I got to get myself right first. Mm -hmm. I'll take care mm -hmm. of you. Dude got himself a little too good because he's on. I'm like, dude, dude. So, so you're dude, sitting there waiting to get I, your dope. And he's I don't gonna, know you. He's going to fix first. Yeah. And you're just waiting on your dope. I'm and waiting. he sits there and fixes and ODs right in front of you. Yes. Nobody else is around. Nobody just else. you and him. I don't know the guy. Yes. I immediately grab everything and I immediately switch hotels. Because I knew his buddy was going to come find me right. once he put everything together. And he only but, knew you from the other motel. Yeah, that's it. So you just disappeared into disappeared the wind. Disappeared into the wind. And then, you know, With a bag full I, of Xanax and a bunch of dope. Like, bus how much dinner. dope? How much Xanax? <sighs> more than I needed. And. <laughs> Definitely more than and you needed. And I, I, I didn't separate things properly at that time. There was acid involved. And so oh. this is black tar stuff. Okay, because we're on the West Coast, and it's fucking weird over there. Uh -huh. And so I put, threw this rock of tar in with my acid. My, I had it in a bag with it, not thinking. Okay. So then I go into this bus station, and, you know, I'm like, Ugh, and I'm trying to shoot up. And, like, I'm, like, in a handicap stall, and this thing won't break down because it's fucking tar, and it's weird, and I'm on the West Coast, and I'm lonely, <laughs> and I just want to get better. And so I'm over here, and I'm... <laughs> in this bathroom stall trying to make it work and so then i go you know and i call the love of my i do this thing i get it done okay i go to call the love of my life in this phone booth in the bus station here i am and i'm talking to him and i'm like yeah and all this has happened to me and now the phone booth is melting he said what i said uh-oh <laughs> so apparently some of that got cross contaminated wow. and then i was dripping balls from shooting up the tar yes wow yeah it was intense i bet it, it peaked out I, every time i've accidentally had an incident with i've had a couple oopsie moments with acid uh -huh. it's peaked out thank god i uh -huh. didn't Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, that happened. Like you'd think that'd be enough to scare me out of shit. No, we still got ten years of fun events to come. Like right, right. So now you you this got just this. The beginning. You just left this motel. This dude just overdosed. You got a bag full of pills. You got heroin. You got acid. Everything. And you're I still show up. I and you're still headed to see your boyfriend, right? This guy that, that has I'm destroyed your life. With. Yeah, he destroyed my life. Yeah, and he's at his dad's house, who's dirt poor. And he's Spanish and barely speaks English. Okay. Okay, so this kid that I was in love with is full Puerto Rican. He looks like a white kid, but his family doesn't really speak English Okay. that well. And so he speaks English, but, you know. Anyway, so I'm going to, like, a really poor Spanish person's house in Oregon. And... They eat rice and beans every day, and that is not racist. It literally, the same pot is on the stove every single day, and it changes just a little bit. They add more things, and it just alters, and it just keeps uh -huh. same pot. And I've never seen poverty quite like that really? before. 
that day. Yeah. Hmm. Like, he That's said like these things school. to me, but it didn't register. Yeah, it's like, like old school. Like, I've seen movies of people that, you know what I mean? Like, really poor it's people. It's always there. It's always on the... It's out, they, there's always there's, a pot on the show. There's stove. a word for that thing, too. Some people, they call it something. I don't something. know what it is. They call it something. There's a name. But it was always there. And, yeah, and there was a Spanish woman. They'd go, like, in and out. She had, like, a bunch of these little flying squirrels in the back. And they wouldn't let me in the back because, like, they were all attached to her, all these, like, little flying squirrels. Hmm. I don't know. And so, like, I spent most of the time on the couch, and they, like, really welcomed me at first, okay? And I didn't know his dad used to be a dope head, too. Okay. Okay, so his dad had been clean when we got there, according, kind of. I don't know. His dad, okay, so we had visited the West Coast, him and I. We went to a festival, and we were, like, hours from his dad. And he never even came and, like, met him to visit him. And that wasn't, like, a red flag then. Right. But then, okay, now we're cut to, we're, we're there now, okay? And so... He notices I show up and, and his son's one way and then all of a sudden, you know, the Xanax and the everything starts to kick. He notices she right. comes and and everything else comes. Kind of obvious, kinda, huh? Yeah, duh. And he stole my stash, though. That's the thing. Like, now he's getting fucked up, but he's acting holier than now. He swiped your shit. He swiped my stash. <laughs> But it was I was I was like over it at that point anyways. Like my mom called, fucked it all up. They wanted me out of there. They sent me to a hotel, and then that then he got like the love of my life got sent to this only Spanish speaking rehab for three months, and I was like, let's just break up. And he was like, no. He's like, I'll get through this, and then you know we'll be together. He's like, you go get situated in New York, and you know we'll meet again. And so uh, I went all the way back to New York. And I, I went and I went with some friends and uh, I did. I went and set up an apartment and I got all this and he made it uh, almost all the way through this rehab. And then he got caught like snorting Suboxone or something and got kicked out like a week after he like it until he would have graduated. And then he broke up with me. And that was it. And I was like, why did we wait all this time? Why did I get all <laughs> situated like Ah! Just to let this go down yeah. this way, and then and then I emailed him every day for six months like a little bitch. No, because I was sad and I and I Nuh-uh. I went every emotion from like you know like come back to Cussing me to out. like fuck you I'm gonna call the cops for all the money you stole from my parents to you know we went across the board all the he probably thought I was like because I was <laughs> yeah you went all the way crazy yeah I did what and was like, it about this dude that she was so enamored by I don't know and you know it's funny I didn't even like he I didn't even realize he was hitting on me at first like I thought he was totally gay I thought he was a total gay man like it took me a long time like he was like he, he would come over to my house almost every weekend like him and this other gay DJ they'd like you know come out spin in Syracuse and then they'd party at my house and then they'd go back to Rochester and so one time he was like, you know, he forgot his ID or something and he, he had to message me to get it back. And uh, he was like, you know, talking about maybe sometime, you know, we can hang out. And I was like, yeah, we hang out every weekend. You know, he's like, no, with, without Ian. And I was like, why? And he was like, you know, like you and me, like a thing. And I was like, I don't get it. And he was like, what don't you get? I was like, are you gay? Are you bi? He's like, what are you talking about? I was like. He's like, I'm straight. I was like, well, Ian's telling everybody that you're his boyfriend. And, like, y'all been getting it on. And, like, he was like, what? And you know for a fact Ian's gay. Yeah. He's, like, flaming gay. (laughs) (laughs) So he comes on to you. You fall in love. Destroy your whole life. Destroys my whole life. How much money did you go through? Like, before you left New York, before the first time y'all left for Virginia. He convinced me to do the stupidest things, like, I never snowboarded before. He convinced me to spend, like, freaking seven grand on snowboarding equipment. Like, we both bought brand new snowboarding boots and boards and, right. like, coats. And we bought yeah. mountain passes and all these things. And I got on that board and I fell forwards. I fell backwards. Yeah, and hard. I said, I hate snowboarding. I went to the lodge and I sold all my stuff. It's hard. Like, done. Yeah, like, hard. why would I do that? He got me to do the dumbest things. Just they, wasting money, looked, like, easy come, good, easy though. go. He was, like, he was just good at... He just made everything look good he was just like made everything sound cool or look good hmm. like he was like hi i'm a red flag like if i were to see him now like walk up to me, I'd be like, hi i'm a red flag like yeah and then of course he gets my shit all fucked up then he goes back to school he graduates summa cum laude he's a bodybuilder now in puerto rico really fuck you <laughs> <laughs> 
cocksucker. You fucking cocksucker. <laughs> you destroyed my life yeah. and then built yours Thank up. Thank you. So what? So this is what age is all this ending up right here? This Dude's like, gone. Like y'all just split 18, up. Nineteen. Okay, so all that happened really quickly. Really quick. You lost everything. You went through everything that you were. You were everything I knew. Right. Yeah. So now, he's gone. Yeah. And you're. What are you doing now? We rebuild. We rebuild okay. every time. Um, but I still different. You know, same different game. Um, back to the ketamine. Okay. Back to what I knew, uh, ordering in the mail, flipping it. Uh, you know, you could order a lot of it really cheap, sell it really high. And you could, you got to have a babysitter. But, like, it didn't It didn't really benefit me either. You know what I mean? To get me any further. Like, uh, the customers are nicer than dope heads, but it didn't really, you know, you just kind of sit there like a child all the time. Okay. Um, I made music. And what does ketamine do to you? Were you using ketamine too or just use oh, just selling? Yeah, see, basically it makes you infantile. Mm -hmm. It uh, makes you amused to be confused, basically happy to be confused. Okay. Um, you kind of like, you'll be like staring at something and then by the time you realize, like I've been staring at my foot for 20 minutes, I'm an idiot, you laugh at that and then you're like, oh, I'm leg. You know, and but you're you back to the next care. thing. Yeah, and you, like a little kid, okay. almost. Like, you just, like, simple things. Like, you're shiny. Can amuse you for, like, 15 minutes. Okay, so you're not doing dope at this point? You're not back um, on the heroin? No, no, I was not. I was just playing around in the rave scene, basically, DJing. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. this is when you started getting into music? Yeah, well, yeah. I was always kind of on and off into music. It took me a while to build my confidence, to be like, hey, I do this. Okay. You know, and I think DJing helped me to do that because I could say I do music without somebody being like, sing. And me being like, ah, like, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think it kind of like slowly helped me kind of get comfortable in being in front of people and doing stuff like that. Right, right, right. But, uh, yeah, because it's yeah. not that easy to do, is it? Yeah, no, yeah. And it, it can be difficult. It, yeah. it can be like second nature. Like, it, what, like I said, like hour 10. Sitting in your own space, in your own zone. It's amazing the things that you could come up with when you're just, like, relaxed and in tune. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. I can drink. Go ahead. Snatch it up. Can you reach it? I got midget arms. So you start uh, building shit back up with ketamine. And, uh, like, is there another hard crash? Is there another hard high? Hello? Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a... I never, I don't know, I don't really, I, I guess, um, I guess the next heart, low moment would be my kids, that situation with my kids. Okay. I get with my husband, we get to my kids. Why don't you drink right there too? Oh, okay. And that's a hairy situation that's really just complicated in itself. Okay. And um, I ended up losing all custody and rights to my kids without there ever being a CPS case, without me ever having a criminal record, without, it got really me messy. It got uh, money won, basically. I let my ex-mother-in-law watch my kids and it became lawyer versus lawyer. And I got my rights violated, basically. They should have been returned to me because I had never committed a crime or anything like that when I asked for them back. Okay. But we went into courts and over time I did fuck up. And I did, I failed like a drug test or two over this two year proceedings. And it, and I ended up losing all rights. I ended up having to pay 10 grand to each lawyer that didn't represent me when I never even had a lawyer representing me. It, it, like, yeah, it would take a really long time, it, you know, and uh, I probably don't even remember everything accurately because I was missing my kids so much that I did started fucking up and I crashed. I had a lot of money, I had a sugar daddy. Okay. And uh, I opened uh, a How music studio. How do you meet studio. him? So I was on SugarDaddyForMe.com. I was a dancer at the time. I was a dancer a couple times. Dancer in New York, dancer in West Virginia. Uh, the, once I realized that you can make money that easily, that right. quickly, All I right. was like, I will never be broke again. Like, what are these chicks doing that aren't making money? Right. Like, <laughs> like, how do you not have money? Right. How do you not have money if this gets money? Like, seriously. Okay. And so um, I was dancing, and I was actually just recruiting people from that Sugar Daddy site to the club. That that was my goal. I wasn't actually trying to get a Sugar Daddy, like, 
permanent. It was incidental. <coughs> incidental that it happened. Um, I just happened to meet him, and he was like, hey, if you just deal with me, nobody else, he's like, I'll take care of everything you need. I'm, he's like, I got it like that. I was like, if, he's like, I, you got, you know, that much money? He's like, yeah. I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah. He did. He had, he had it like that. I mean, I, that vehicle I drive right now, that $50,000 car, he bought it outright for me. Hmm. We just went into the dealership. I was dressed like Thing 2. And I was like, I, I want that one, you know? Like, I, he, he did have it like that. Right. And so, uh, but I didn't know how long this was going to last. So I was just going to, you know, ride it till the wheels fall off, basically. And uh, I made this music studio, and I thought that I could do this a lot quicker. I thought I could get famous and do this music career a lot quicker than I could. Mm -hmm. And I did use that time to practice, and I honed in a lot. Like, I, I could do a lot. My, my abilities are way better, but... Because of the whole kid situation, this is what I'm dwelling on. So my music becomes depressing. I start doing more and more drugs. My brother gets murdered in the process by his wife, who was like, I knew her since childhood. Wow. So like, yeah. And so I try to investigate that in the process, but I'm so fucked up in my own head that I can't do it. And his ghost comes to me at the same time. Yeah. Now... I find out there's a God and all this other stuff because I'm over here ignoring spirituality and he's like knocking down my freaking door and I'm like, I'm losing my mind at the same time. So like, yeah, lots happening. Yeah, it's, that's, it's that's, a, that's yeah. a very busy world. It's a busy world, right? And then, yeah. And so no sobriety happened and the music studio eventually crashed. But I still have all the equipment. I still have the abilities, you know, um... It just the timing. It just wasn't, you know, it wasn't right. <laughs> Kids become Mentally. priority though, right? Yeah. Kids, yes. Or at and least so, they should. I, yeah. I should say they should become priority. And uh, I, I, I don't think I'm going to win that situation. That situation is going to play out when they're older, I think. Um, when you have it, more it time to sit down. It took a very long down. time to come to terms with that and accept my part in that mm -hmm. too. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Because I'm not completely innocent. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. But, anyways. Yeah, man, you're on point, though. Yeah. So, what are you doing now? Like, what do you do now to keep you away from ketamine or keep you away from dope? Um, so, I have so many things. To, I have more things to do than I have time. And, you know, uh, somebody said a long time ago, I don't even know who it was, but, like, you should be grateful that you have things to do. And it was, like, I didn't really get it until you know i had too much to do and it's like yeah but i'm lucky because those things keep me busy those things keep me focused right. you know if i had nowhere to be then i wouldn't have any you know like drive to be anywhere mm -hmm. so like yeah like it, it is annoying to you know wake up the baby and change a dirty butt but you know that gets me up and that gives me a reason to do the next step you know so um yeah idle hands are the devil's workshop that's kind of a saying forever right yeah if, you, if I don't have something to do, I'll find something to do or I'll find trouble. Right. That's just the way it works for me as well. Because yeah. I know you do a lot of different things. You've been talking about these yeah. hats that you're making. Sublimation. And... Yes, I just got into the sublimation stuff. And um, um, I initially used it to promote uh, the dispensary bartenders. Mm -hmm. And um, that definitely keeps us busy developing new products for that full time. Right, and that's know. that's what you do and full time. It. That's what you do full time. So mm -hmm. it's is the only way to contact you through. Um, so you can contact us through Facebook. You can um, also contact us through Telegram. We verify everybody. So like you can't get the menu. You can't get any of the actual like details of the products until you verify and we confirm you're 21 and you right. are who you say. Right. Um, but other than that, like, yeah, you could you could totally, you know, get with us. We, we always answer the phone as soon as you get, you know, um, message us and we give you that number. As soon as you hit us, we're, we're pretty prompt. We try to have good customer service. That's our thing. And like uh, cool looking products. You're not going to get a Ziploc bag. Why are people using Ziploc bags at this day and age? Like just spend a couple extra bucks on a miler if you can't get the plastic container. Right. Like, we shouldn't be doing these ghetto things, though. Like, we could do, you know, 
we we could have the nice packaging. And it, and uh, as adults, I feel like we don't get surprises anymore. So like anybody that spends over sixty five, we surprise with stuff. Like you know, and it, it's a real product. It's something cool. Or sometimes we make things. You know, sometimes you make a pair of earrings. I don't know. You know, it could. Can be right. different things. We we go with whatever we think you like. If you know you get a bunch of a certain thing and something new comes out, we'll throw you that product. Right. You know. Right. Um, so like, you still use weed? Um. Yes. I how, smoke. How do you like? Okay. So you smoke what? Flour, waxes, everything. Um. So I don't really the wax. I I don't know. Like I I really thought once I had all this, you know, like everybody's like raw. I love the taste of has rosin, but like. I don't know. Like, I got old lungs or something. I don't know if it's because I smoke cigarettes uh, or what. I'm a flower like, I, guy. I can't, I can't do it. I can't do the wax. It's okay. It's for everybody. You know, everything's not for everybody, man. I but find, you find, like, a healing process in the weed? Is it, like, something that helps you to is, cope? Or? It is. It's it's a thing that I used to bond. It's a thing I used to cope. It's, you know, like, it's my source of income. It's a lot of things. Um, it helps me when my back is killing me. Um, we have these edibles that really are like neck strength, and if you actually have you know legitimate pain, they will do things to help you. You know, it's more than just like get stoned and sit around. You can do right. that, but you know, you probably won't get yeah, a lot the, done. Yeah, the medical part of it is what I'm more yeah. of an advocate for than anything. Like, right. I mean, of course, I like to catch a buzz, but it chills out my anxiety, my racing brain. Right. Uh, but if somebody can do CBD or weed instead of taking a Percocet or an Oxy or something like that, especially if you've had problems in the past, like yeah. definitely do that. Yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, it, I want people to know more. I, I want to know more and I want there to be more like, uh, information, like legitimate information. Like mm -hmm. I feel like before, like you used to go to your guy and be like, I just want a bag of weed. You know, now we ask for a strain, but I want it to get to the point where like I have, you know, all the details of every strain listed. This will make you feel this way. It'll probably taste this way. You know, I'd like more right. information to be yes. shared just all around. And so you get the right product. You know what I mean? It helps me help you, basically. Like, you know, because like I hit it in the middle of the night. I'll smoke a bowl all of a sudden and then I'm cleaning and I'm like, shit, it's a sativa. Mm -hmm. I wish <laughs> and, I wanted to know, lay down. Yeah, I wanted to lay down and I'm cleaning the house. Like right. if I would have had the information, I would have known that. I think that customer experience means a lot, too, because uh, customer service is dying, and mm -hmm. the, you can tell it in almost every store that you go into, mm -hmm. self-checkouts and the rudeness and things like that. And if you're used they to being care. treated, yeah, right, they don't care. And they don't they don't care how they answer you or how they talk to you or good evening, good, you know, right. see you later, nothing like that. I think the customer service thing means a lot. We have a chat and review, and all the time, like, if I feel like if we do something – and, and I don't mind this. Our customers will not hesitate to put us on blast in that chat and review, you know, um, by all means. That's why it's there. Mm -hmm. But so many times in life do I wish other people had a chat and review because I sit there and I'm like, man, I wish they had this because I would so put what they just did mm -hmm. up there right mm -hmm. now. Like, you know, I want them to be held accountable. It seems like right, so a lot of the bigger places are not held accountable. Right. And that's basically what you're saying is when they hold you accountable, it helps you to upgrade what you're doing. Right. Right. Yeah. And by not being able to hold Walmart accountable, you can't never tell them right. okay. how to make like, your there's experience a whole message better. Board of pissed off people up there. And they don't care. They, they don't, don't care. care about your experience getting better, bro. They don't, they don't care. They care about money. Yeah. And that's the thing. We, we, we want it to be more about the people than the money. Mm -hmm. and, and then that'll naturally happen. You do good business and the money will naturally come. It's like those people um, that are contacting you. Big, big, uh, big dealers, little dealers. They're busy. The real ones, they're busy. They're not going to contact you. Honestly, most people will not contact you. If they're contacting you, it is probably a scam. You know, uh, if you have a good product, it just speaks for itself, and people will come to, to them. Right. And, and that's, you know, legitimate. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's the product and, and being able to talk to people, too. Right. Uh, same thing I do with tattooing. I try not to. Right. I don't want to make you a number. I want to make it an experience. Right. You know, exactly. you're not just coming to get a tattoo from me. You're spending the whole fucking day with me. Right. The least I you're can do is fun. talk to you and be nice, right? Right. Exactly. I hate going to go to an artist or, or somewhere like that, and it's just. Experience yeah, right, right, right. Encounter. Right, and there's no interest in what you're doing at all. Yeah. No interest in you or nothing. Just you know, what do you want? Let me yeah. put it on you and get the fuck out. Yeah. 
So yeah, customer service is a dying thing. I think that means a lot. And then, like you said, providing the product, man. And I have fun doing it, though. It's it's not like it's not even bad to to do. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. like it's fun to smile. It's fun to make people. I think say. that's more about what life is than making money, isn't it? You right. know, you got a, this sixty hour a week guy that is Enjoy. miserable, but he makes enough money to deal with himself. I mean, it's almost. I can't be that guy. I mean, either. I just can't. I can't either. I want to be happy with what I'm doing, even if it makes me less money. Right. You right. Know? I, I I don't make a whole lot of money tattooing, but I love doing it compared to what I used to do. Right. You know, no fun. Right. A forty hour grind. Yeah, I, yeah. I always feel like I don't have enough time, but I'd much rather be feeling like this and doing what I'm doing than doing anything else. Mm-hmm. You know. But eventually, I do want to do music. We're we're grinding with uh, this in mind. You know, it, it'll get there. It's steps. Do you do any meetings? Do you do any things like that? To like, do you have any issues with uh, cravings? And does it ever tell you, hey, I wish I could do a big fat pill or a big line of heroin, or maybe I'll take this fentanyl pill? Nothing that ever crosses your mind. Um, you know. I'm just not around. I'm so far removed from it. The only time that I kind of feel like, huh, I really kind of, I should and I'll show is my spouse. He he was somebody I thought would never get clean. I almost got with him, I think, because I thought he would never get clean. Honestly, I thought we'd always be a shit show together. We wouldn't even get together for the longest time because we didn't want to share our shit. He didn't want to share shit with me. I didn't want to share my shit with him. Like, we, you know, we'd only get together if we had no shit to share. Hmm. <laughs> And so it's funny because he got clean and now he stands so firm against it that it's only when he he's like, you know, you won't. It makes me feel like, oh, I won't, hmm. you know, and, and I'm not going to. I don't even know who to call. But in those moments, yeah, I do kind of feel like that rebellious, you know what I mean? Like, I'll show you. But right. the steps that I would have to take to even get there, it'd be too, you know, he... It, I'd be stopped. It'd be we'd have a conversation. It, there's too many things in between. Yeah. But that's good. I think the further yeah. removed you are, yeah. I always say it's like two magnets. You put them close together, they'll catch. But right. when you flip them over, they start pushing. Right. After a while, you get to the push point. Right. You, there's it, a little something that pulls you back for a long time, but after a while, it starts to push you away, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. And and you know, in that music studio thing. It's kind of funny because Erica, you know, Erica, uh, she used to work for me, Erica Barnes. Okay. She used to be my personal assistant when I had that music studio. Okay. And uh, I had this kid that I thought that uh, I could save. I was I, I was already, I thought I, I, I had been out long enough that I was good for some reason at this point. So I brought this kid from New York, and Erica was my assistant at the time, and, and he was getting her to bring in pills. And eventually, I figured out what she came to me, and she goes, uh, you know, I, I need to get the money for such and such. And I said, for what? And she said, uh, he said you were going to. And I said, uh-uh, I didn't even know about this. Like So anyways, like we, we had that whole situation. I thought I could save him. He dragged me right back into it, mm-hmm. like it, it, worse than ever. I don't know why I thought I could help an addict so soon. Like that, that's like, before you you had built your foundation. Yeah. I didn't even kind of have a foundation. Right. I just had a music studio and and, and I thought I, you know, I thought I just thought she was doing well. Yeah. I was on meth. So, you know, I wasn't on dope. So I was doing good. Oh, okay. (laughs) I don't know. Meth. Did you like meth too? Like that's. No, I didn't really, but you can perform forever on it. Yeah. Like you could just days and days you can write pages of music. I mean. The music made sense, like when you got done writing the songs on it, they made sense to you when you were sober. Um, yes, I made some great songs, but eventually I made a lot of bad songs. Right. Um, they became depressing, but I did do a lot of good ones, and I I think a lot of my better songs were almost channeled. I don't know that sounds crazy. Are any of those literally. released somewhere that you can? I I can I can I can show them, give them to you. Yeah, I have them. I have okay. a lot of music. So you just I have, have a ton of music. There's nothing on Spotify or YouTube or um, anything like that. There's some on my Facebook. There is. They're, they're all over the place, though. Every new producer put them in a new spot, did a new thing, had a new oh. piece of equipment. I ran through these producers who ran through my money, basically. Ran me in circles, did what they wanted to do. And I got a couple good songs here and there, but I, I got to run around a lot. 
And uh, to the point where I ended up wanting to just produce myself and I ended up going to college and I got a degree for uh, music, communication, something, production. And uh, yeah, and I didn't even get to finish my actual major because I ended up getting imprisoned over some BS out here uh, and kicked out of the school. Okay. Before I could finish. And then imprisoned. I, yeah. So, so you didn't just serve that up. You didn't just yeah. serve that up and expect no question after that, right? So, yeah, it's like a Pandora's box. Everything has another, like. Mm -hmm. So I'm out here and I'm on methadone. I was, and uh, at the time, and I had lied. I don't, well, I didn't really lie. I had mentioned that I was going in between living at this hotel and my boyfriend's parents' house, okay? And so I had put my boyfriend's parents' house on probation when I was on probation as my residence. Right. Well, they show up there. I'm not there. And they thought I was trying to hide something. So they show up to the motel. They come and toss my room. You know, why didn't you tell us the proper address? Da, 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 da. They drug test me. They said that I had Suboxone in my system. Now, if you know anything about being on the... You can't take them both. You can't mix them. Like, so... I explained this. They're like, yeah, okay, we're, we're not born yesterday. And I'm like, no, seriously, like, it wouldn't even be a fun game to play. Like, like well, how do cops not know that? How <laughs> yeah. the fuck do they not know those things? Right. Like, a simple I'm little like, class would educate them. Please take me and test me again. Please send this off to a lab because this just doesn't even make sense. Mm -hmm. And so uh, they take me down to the probation office. Yeah, we'll do it again. I go into, you know, I go pee again. I go into the room and they're like, so tell us, you know, why you did this. And it's like, oh my God, are you serious? They went through my phone a million times, found nothing. But, you know, like I smoke weed. Right. <laughs> um, and then, uh, yeah, they took me to jail. So I go into jail and I, you know, I'm with my lawyer. Talking. On a probation violation for what? Uh, of, for, absconding. No, it wasn't absconding. It was for the test. For the the okay, for a suboxone, false for suboxone a false positive. while I'm on methadone, and it's a so, false positive. Yeah, and that. I was pregnant, by the way. Okay. And and so I'm they're doing this to a pregnant chick, so I'm all pregnant, and they they put me in there, and so uh, I go into the court, and I, you know, while I'm talking to my lawyer, and my lawyer goes, you know, because I'm taking I, I'm taking drug tests at the clinic and stuff like that, and I had just been drug tested like the day before, or something like that. You know what I mean? Like I, I there's a I could show, you know, like that I've, mm -hmm. anyways, so I'm talking to him and he said, uh, uh, he said, yes, you, you probably can, you know, uh, prove that you, you know, that, that you didn't do this. And he's like, but you're going to have to sit in here a couple weeks because this is going to take time. He said, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to have to file things. I'm going to, you know, he's like, we're going to have to actually prove this. Right. He's like, or you can get out today if you plead guilty. Fuck. What Dude, do you think why I did? I'm pregnant. I'm sitting bro, in Bro, why jail. do they do that? Though? That's yeah, so wrong. Is it not uh, wrong? It's so wrong. You know what, you know what so, they're going to so do. So what did you plead guilty to? I like you guilty just guilty to, 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 to having Suboxone in my system. So was this a new charge on your record or was no, it just something it against your probation? No, it was just a probation violation. Okay. Second probation violation. So if you get a third one, though... I'm off of probation now. Oh, like, uh, okay. Gotcha. But at the this, same time, this, too, yeah. they're kind of like planting that seed that says, if you get another one, now we get to up the, the we Annie. Were, oh, yeah. No, if I got one more, they got to throw all my time at me. Right. That was it. Right. And it's, uh, I don't know. That just seems a little bit ridiculous to me. Mm -hmm. To be like... I, I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. So methadone, suboxone, anything like that? Are you still on anything like that now? I am on methadone. Okay, how much yeah. do you take a day? Uh, 155. I actually forgot it this morning, so I'm like a little weird because I'm not used to waking up so early. Okay. <laughs> I'm a little, but it's okay. It, it has a half-life, so like I won't be sick or anything right. like that until like a day or something. You know right. what I mean? I'll go home. I'll take right, it and what do you time. get, like a month take home at a time now? Or um, I, I get two weeks. Two weeks at a time? Which is funny because like I have a little over two years uh, clean tests, mm -hmm. and... You should be getting them off. Yeah, I did switch clinics though. Oh. Part way through, and so I think during this switch out change out, Crossroads did everything to screw me over and Darren over. They didn't really get me screwed over; they screwed him over a lot. So and Darren, so he's on it too. Yeah, he you feel went. like that saved your life? You feel like that's helped you a he lot? He dragged me in there. He literally dragged me in there upside down. <laughs> 
and filled out the paperwork for me. And he said, you're going. I'm not being with you like this. And uh, I was like, whatever. And, uh, yeah, no, he saved my life by doing that. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. A lot of people. Don't, don't, don't tell him that, though. Right, don't let him know that. Don't watch this. Uh, I'm not letting him have that. Right. Edit this out. <laughs> but that's definitely, uh, uh, you know, I think it's important information to know that that is a option. Yes, it you is an I mean? option. And it does and it does work for people to show that you can be successful. I mean, here you're fucking sitting here right now, right? Yeah. How, ma- how many thousands of dollars did you go through before you went to the methadone clinic? Oh my God. How many thousands I of dollars did you didn't spend even on dope? I think about it as an option when I was on dope. I don't know why. I don't know why it took me so long. And now you're able to function every day, raise your kids. You're not in that. Dope becomes your life. It's that race of getting it and getting more. And then even if you even if you end up getting all of it, like I ended up, okay, I had a bunch of dope and I had a good connect. And then it was like, well, now I'm going to start doing crack or coke so I mm-hmm. can, you know, go the opposite way so I can feel my dope again. And mm-hmm. it's like you just keep adding to your addiction. It never goes less. Like you just... It's all the bullshit. It becomes more and more your life. And then you end up like my dad. My dad is the worst case of this. Like, I tried to help him recently. Uh, He came out here to Virginia because everybody was done with him, basically. His girlfriend got cancer, and she couldn't deal with chemo and him. She had to restraining order him out of the house because he was chasing her naked with scissors. Okay, yeah, so I ended up uh, getting him multiple places out here, and he screwed every one of them up amazingly. Like, I couldn't even have, I made this shit up. Like, it was like, okay, you're staying with a woman, and she's been living by herself for 10 years, and now all of a sudden there's pee all over her bathroom floor, and you're saying it's not you. Right. Well, I think it comes with accountability if he's never been held accountable for all the craziness. He has not, and uh, his girlfriend took care of him, and it was like I was trying to little, you know, like help him little bits, but he was just like, nothing is good enough, and it's like, you can't start from where you want to be. You have to start from where you are. Mm -hmm. This is where you are. Like, he'd talk, if you talk to him, he'd talk about his house and his boat, and da 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 like he still had it. Like, you'd think he had all these things. Oh, okay. Like, he didn't. He was just didn't realize the situation that he was actually in, and it was like very frustrating. He's still stuck there now. He's still stuck there. It's I couldn't do it. The last uh, he started threatening me, trying to uh, blackmail me, and I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna be blackmailed by you. I'm not. I'm sorry. I can't. Right. Yeah, I have to say enough is enough, and too much is too much. It's hard though, ain't it? I yeah, mean, it's, your it's pops. But had I not tried, like, I went out to New York and tried to help him. Then I I brought him out here and tried to help him. Like, and, you know, a lot of people tried to help him. And it's just he doesn't want the help. You can't help somebody who doesn't get it, who doesn't want to help themselves. So I have to protect my family, myself now, you know, so. Yeah, man. Uh, The family thing is definitely a hard part of it, too. Uh, I was on the other side of it. I was the one that making everybody stressed the fuck out instead of the one trying to get everybody straight. But <laughs> it's definitely something you come back to regret when you finally get it together. Hopefully you'll get it together and make some type of amens or something, you know? Honestly. Doesn't look like your expectation says that, though. Yeah. I don't even know if I'm going to the funeral. It's hmm. sad. I don't. Something serious would have to happen. I don't like to speak in absolutes, but some serious have to change. Yeah. Hmm. Hard to forget those resentments. Yeah. Um, it's not even that. It's like, he didn't really raise me. He didn't really, you know, help me. And, like, uh, he was like a guy that you partied with more than a father. Right. Ever. So, like, I don't know. Um I don't have that father bond with him, and I also don't have a mother bond, I guess. It's kind of funny because uh, my parents are, like, complete messes, but Darren's parents have been together since the third grade. Right. They're, like, total opposite. And so it's pretty cool I watch them. So with that, too, with that, too, not having your mom and dad in your life like that, do you feel like that makes you more involved with your kids? Um, I think it, it made me try to be a better parent. Which 
also pissed me off with my girls because my mother made sure I couldn't with them. Mm -hmm. So it was like, not only did you fuck up my childhood, but you made sure I couldn't do a better job with mine. Now I have my son, different, you know what I mean? Different situation. But at that point, it was almost like he had to take that too. Hmm. Yeah. A lot of resentment there. Yeah. That shit's hard to forgive. Yeah. Oh, it was like he thought Eminem hated his mom. So there's this, <laughs> I, I uh, started this song called Feel Less. My mom's name is Phyllis, but the song is Feel Less because mm -hmm. she couldn't feel less if she tried. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's the, the joke, and it's like you think Eminem hated his mom. So like your uh, <laughs> your music was a an outlet that you know you said it had upbeat yeah. music and then sadder music like depending I on got, how you're feeling right. Yeah, all of it. You're writing your own board. songs. You're making your own beats. Yeah, okay. yeah. I can make my own beats. Uh, I can. I definitely write my own songs. Um, the recording portion of it, I'm still working on, but I you know have the tools. It's not the time, mm -hmm. but, but uh, yeah. is it, that's eventually the goal, though. Or like, yeah. are you still chasing that? Yeah, uh, yep. It's just kind of on standby now because your hands are so full. Oh yeah. So maybe once the I kids think are. I think one will lead lead to the other. Honestly, it's like how many rappers smoke weed. <laughs> right. Yeah, they kind of go hand in hand, don't they? Right. For sure, Snoop Dogg wouldn't be near as famous as he is today without weed. I'm saying. <laughs> Call me. Right, hit me, hit me up. <laughs> hit me up. <laughs> yeah, man. So, is there anything else you want to say? Is like something else you want to share? You got a point to prove to somebody? Something you want to say? Well, not point to prove to her, but like a point you want to say. Hey, if I had a message to put out there, here it is. Uh, man, you know, last night I was trying to think of what I would do, and I'm like, I'm gonna forget everything that I was thinking. I know how that uh, feels when it happens? Yeah, because you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. Absolutely. I just want to be like, you know. Dr. Phil, why won't you answer me? By the way, that's what I want to say. <laughs> what are you trying? I've been writing that mother for so What do so you want to get long. on Dr. Phil for? I've been trying. Dr. Phil, I mean, I need help. <laughs> okay. I need emotional help. I need, I need help, Jamie. <laughs> no, I got some stories that need to be told, honestly, like that whole thing with my brother. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the kid situation. Like I said, there, there's a lot to the things that I touched on okay. that really, it requires Dr. Phil's help. It would only, anything short of him, I don't think we could get it done. Okay. <laughs> Serious mental evaluation. Then. No, uh, yeah. I need, I need Dr. Phil's assistance. Dr. Phil. Answer me, please. Answer the damn phone. Please. How many people you think put in a Dr. Phil a day though? Gotta be a lot. I watch him every morning. Really? <laughs> yeah, and they're like, and when they say like, I've been writing for like a couple months, or like I've written like twice, I'm like, are you kidding me? Like we're literally yelling many, at the screen. How many like, times have you wrote? <laughs> oh my god, probably. I'm gonna say at least over twenty. Okay, and over and, 20. and how long of a period of time? Last couple years. Okay. And I say like, and you, like these years. are snail mail. This is Dr. email. Doctor Phil, don't call me out on my numbers. They're not exact, but it's a lot. It's a lot. It's more than most people. <laughs> it's more than most people. She deserves it. Deserve she deserves it, it Doctor Phil. Yeah, I've been telling you some shit, man, for a while. <laughs> <laughs> so you're in your letters. You're already spitting out like, here's a summary of what I want to talk to you about, right? Yes. Right. Yes. You gotta let Every him know a little bit. Like I'll be like, I'll be having a hard night. I'll be like, you know what? I'm gonna try to get on Doctor Phil again. Have you tried? Have you tried sending videos? You know, I'm terrible at that for no, some you're not. reason. I, no, you're not. Just I, sit down, and start talking to the camera, man. Uh, be yourself and tell him what you want to tell him. Like it might school. hit him different than the words do. Yeah, that's that's probably that's what Darren keeps telling me. He's like, you just got to do a video. And I was like, man. <sighs> Get you an outline. Out. An outline of what you want to say. I want to touch on these couple points, whatever it is. And then just free. Just go into it and tell him. Yeah. Make sure you spark his interest in the first couple seconds so he stays hanging out and listening. And he's going to call you. I, I just, gonna call you. You're going to be like White Man Can't Jump and that girl with Jeopardy. Remember that movie? No. <laughs> what? No. She tried to get on Jeopardy for a long time and she was sitting around answering questions. She had like, really? what are fruits with the name that start with the letter Q? Quince. And, oh, it's great. Great movie. If you've never seen the original White Man Can't Jump, mm. not the new one. But anyways, and she finally got on Jeopardy, made a bunch of money and 
That's you, dude. That's You're going to go on Dr. Phil. Gonna You're going to be the next Cash Me Outside girl. Cash Me Outside. How about that? <laughs> Cash Me Outside. Oh, uh, you got to get your fingernails real long and talk real ghetto. You get you on know. there, you'll be all right. Call me Shafanda. Damn it. <laughs> all right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming. Yeah. Let's uh, travel around let's fire one of these little shawties up. I am. Yeah, yeah, we're getting ready to do that. Sure so is. drop a like, man, and hit a comment. If y'all got any questions or anything for Brianna, man, definitely do that. Y'all can hit them up at the butt tenders. You know, find them on Facebook. You got to be verified, though. They're not just going to let any of you monkeys in. Plus. You monkeys got to have an identification. ID. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I got to urinate so bad I can't stand it, Brianna.